In celebrating America's black history, there are many chapters yet to be written, many stories that survive only by word of mouth or through local legends or landmarks. Such a landmark exists on Maryland's eastern shore, far off the well-beaten path many of us take to the beach. If you were to take a side trip down more back roads than I can recount, you might happen upon it, a church by the road, a church that has seen better days, but a church where, within its ramshackle walls, you can still feel the spirit of African Americans from a century ago. says, I'm sometimes up and I'm sometimes down, and sometimes I'm almost level with the ground, but still I have heaven in my view, and you just, you pray for me and I'll pray for you, and one of these days we'll meet in heaven. It was built in 1885, this church by the road, built by the black farmers and watermen who lived here in Oriole on Maryland's eastern shore, built to last by Margaret Johnson's ancestors. To me, it was my life. This is where I um, grew up, became educated. Um, religious beliefs. And, and uh, from there, I learned most everything I've learned during my life. I learned St. James Church. And I can see the Uncle John, Henry Selby, and Aunt Martha, and they all sit right over there. <coughs> St. James the Apostle was a fisher of men. He caught Ida B. Harper 86 years ago. I just see them sitting all around and where they sit. <coughs> And they would, whoever, they would all have the choir, that choir box would be full of the people singing and, and, uh, and Aunt Reba playing. know they all sound so good to me because I was a child I just thought they just sound like that we're all going to heaven and right now we have putting in long hours of work out on the, on the on the Chesapeake Bay and you don't know whether you're going to have a nor'easter blow in and drive you out into to the heart of the Chesapeake and you don't know whether that you go out today, whether you're going to come back tomorrow, you needed a, a refuge, and St. James provided that refuge. Sammy Thomas has documented the town's past and its family trees, trees that grew from one free woman of color, Leah Shelton, born 1794, a single head of household who owned land. Well, if this lady can live in the midst of slavery, if she can live at a time when her immediate freedoms can be taken from her. I'm saying, well, why can't we do better in our present time? What is it that she, that, 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 that gave her strength to, to overcome that we're not doing? And I think that one of the things that, which is represented by this church is that she had an, an unbending faith. Oh, so many of them are gone on, gone on. Thank God I'm yet on the way. Jesus said, repent, 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 repent. It's something about that word repent that man should fall on his knees. 
It died in 1965, this church by the road. There was mourning, all right. I could have died with it. I didn't go to another church for years. It, I just, just couldn't bear to went to another church because they had closed down the church. Oh, yes, Oreo has really gone down. There used to be plenty of people here, close to a 1,000 people. But we, this used to be in uh, Oyster Town. Down the road further is the water, the wharf, where they used to go tonging and, uh, in the winter and crabbing in the summer. In fact, there's still crab down there, but it's very few from Oreo that are living that do that now. They come from around to crab. But the Arthurin has died out, and several other people have died or moved away. And uh, there's very few here now. Because truly, if when this church is restored, it will be a miracle. And it's only through you, God, that we are trusting you from the I thought to myself, oh, Lord, if I could just hit the lottery, I would have that church restored. And nobody would have to ask about it. I'd have it restored. But I don't play the lottery, and you can't win if you don't play. <laughs> And so it will be born again, this church by the road. The Oriole family, with branches all over the country, has formed its own historical society to save the church, and the old hall across the way, and the cemetery. Their means are limited. They've only raised about $7,000 so far. But their belief is unbending. And we have great faith, too, that the day will come when they reopen St. James. In the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Just ahead on Capital Edition, Vic Sussman takes you on a guided tour of your childhood and Carl Rowan has some stories to tell from his revealing new best-selling book, Breaking Barriers. Stay with us.